If you don't know about the Great Dickens Christmas Fair, it's this big event that happens in the Bay Area during November and December. Imagine a Renaissance fair, but it's mid-Victorian and Christmas time. The ghosts of Christmas are wandering around, the Queen and her family are out in London doing their Christmas shopping, the carolers are singing, the rebellious Irish are causing mischief and getting chased by the Coldstream Guards, and surprise, surprise, people of color exist. They existed in Victorian London at all levels of society and in all kinds of roles, and they deserve to exist at Dickens Fair. Full stop. They shouldn't need to justify that. Although, apparently the production company that puts on Dickens Fair feels otherwise. The Londoners of the African Diaspora is the affinity group for Black cast and crew members at Dickens Fair. Over the past year, since the murder of George Floyd and the massive civil rights movement that arose in response, LOAD have made a major push to work with Red Barn Productions, the company that puts on Dickens Fair, to fix their very minimal inclusion policies. After several months of Red Barn failing to make any meaningful changes and disregarding the anti-racism initiative that they asked LOAD for, LOAD gave a new statement on their website. You can read the statement, the anti-racism initiative, and a timeline of relevant events, all at the links in the description. The anti-racism initiative is really pretty standard stuff for an event of this size. Having HR and DEI professionals involved, clear policies addressing harassment, diversifying leadership and vendors, casting BIPOC historical figures, using color-conscious casting policies, including anti-racism in the early cast workshops. Inclusion 101, basically. None of this is unreasonable for an event that, last I heard, has a cast and crew of over 1,500 people. The Londoners of the African diaspora deserve a say in these policies and a seat at the table, and they have the backing of every other affinity group at Dickens Fair, including me as a Jewish cast member. These changes will make the magic of Dickens Fair available to everyone, instead of only a privileged few who can see themselves in Red Barn Productions' vision of London. By doing all this work for free, LOAD has essentially taken the load off Red Barn's shoulders. They've offered a path forward on a silver platter, all Red Barn had to do was say yes, and yet Red Barn keeps brushing them off, disregarding their voices, refusing to make even minimal changes, and dealing with them deceptively and in bad faith. There's numerous examples of this explained in their statement, as well as in the timeline linked below, including a time Red Barn wanted to cast a white man in brown face. LOAD explained that after escalating bad faith actions from Red Barn, they've made a statement of no confidence in the production company. They're calling for a supervisory board and proper inclusion policies, or if Red Barn refuses to work with them, a strike from the cast and crew. A link to the statement of no confidence is also in the description. Now, I love performing at Dickens Fair. If you've been here a while, you've heard me talk about my experiences there. Long days spent singing and dancing with friends and strangers, wearing the costume that was my first step into historical dressmaking. Dickens Fair got me through a really rough winter, and I don't want to see it end or be canceled. But it's not all sunshine and rainbows either. With my disability, I ran into a lot of accessibility problems. My corset hurt badly even after I paid the costume shop to help me with it. The accommodations I needed, things like flexible attendance requirements and a place to rest if my pain flared up, were completely up to my cast directors. If they'd refused, there's no recourse at all. I haven't even tried to play a Jewish character, because that character probably wouldn't be part of the performance groups I'm in. And I've had it so easy compared to other marginalized cast members. No one's told me to change my costume or my backstory because of how I look. No one's told me that I can only play roles that give me gender dysphoria. No one's made me justify six ways from Sunday where I should be allowed to exist in a whitewashed, reductive, and regressive portrayal of Victorian London. Maybe a strike seems extreme at first, but this has been brewing for a long time. Red Barn's issues go back decades, and LOAD has spent nearly a year trying to negotiate with them before reaching this point. When LOAD's statement was posted to the Dickens Fair cast and crew Facebook group, Red Barn's response was to delete the post, describe it as a takeover, and then nuke the entire Facebook group. The email they sent out responding to LOAD gaslit the cast about Red Barn's long history of mishandling issues like sexual harassment and accessibility, misrepresented Red Barn's communications with LOAD, and made no apologies for the environment they've created, nor any indication that they'd share leadership like LOAD has called for. After a year of cheap talk and no change, their words ring very hollow. These aren't the actions of a company that's learning how to do anti-racism. These are the actions of a company trying to get away without the most basic of steps towards a safe and inclusive environment. LOAD doesn't want Dickens Fair to be cancelled. No one does. But they, and I, refuse to be part of an event that doesn't stick up for its cast and crew, and perpetuates racist and otherwise bigoted ideas about the past and the present. We want a safe, inclusive, and equitably run Dickens Fair. We know it's possible. And we will accept nothing less. So here's my point. I don't know the details of all the racism that the BIPOC cast members have been subjected to, and I don't have to. 
I believe them. I don't need them to display their trauma in front of me to be willing to support them. If people of color are telling us what they need, I am in no position to judge what they're asking for because I haven't been through what they've been through. If my version of allyship is to think I could ever know better than them, that they should have to work to convince me that their needs are real, then I am not really an ally. I'm just another judgy white person, and I'm a judgy white person who wants a pat on the back for being a good ally, even while I'm standing in the way of actual change. My role is not to judge. If they're ready for a strike, my role is not to question or to need convincing that it's necessary. My role is to have their back. So I have their back. I trust them, I stand with them, and I will walk with them. What about you? The Londoners of the African diaspora need us to show up for them by emailing Red Barn's management, posting on social media, and being prepared to leave Dickens Fair if Red Barn doesn't get their act together. I'll put a list of email addresses for Red Barn and Dickens Fair management up on screen, as well as in the description. Please email these people and tell them you won't go to a Dickens Fair that isn't equitable and inclusive. Latoya Tools, the president of LOAD, has made an Instagram post you can share, also linked in the description. You can do all of this even if you aren't local to the Bay Area. Dickens Fair gets a ton of business from people visiting from out of town. But most of all, if we're going to save the Dickens Fair we love, we need to be prepared to let it go. If Dickens Fair isn't, well, fair, then it isn't worth having.